Oh, time to get up. Let's go. Come on. Come on, y'all get up. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Come on, get up. Damn. Y'all come on, y'all get stressed, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get dressed, y'all. Come on. Let's get dressed. Yeah. 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 Simeon, led by Derrick Rose, the City Player of the Year, is a team Marshall faced early in the season. Although we won the previous meeting easily, that was then. This is now. The Simeon team is improved and motivated. As Simeon continually beats us to the punch, desperation starts to set in. have been on games that we played before this year and for whatever reason you know, and, and, and I don't know the reason those officials have never officiated the game fairly uh, fairly so that uh, it, it's, it's all about the kids they have officiated games where they have made it personal with the head coach and I think that's very unfair to the kids Why did y'all start playing pure? First off, I'll say I started playing, take the, uh, take the loss off my head, start laughing about stuff. 
You said what? Take the, take the, uh, the loss we just had turned into a positive thing. Just people laugh. I mean, they want, they want even to even see it. You know, like, no, it, it, it's blowing up to a whole big thing out of nothing. You don't think what y'all just did is nothing. We got third and fourth place. Instead of y'all humbling y'all self and cooling out. Playing. That's how your head got swollen, because you fucked your head. No, I'm outside. Okay. When you're down, you have two choices. Stay down or get up. Coach Bryan holds a handful of players out of the game due to the fight the previous night. The reserves take advantage of the opportunity and play well enough to keep the game close. Marshall fights to end the season on a positive note. Eventually, Patrick and the other key players are allowed onto the court. Patrick quickly puts his stamp on the game. Marshall captures the third place trophy, just as we did my senior year. We can't save them all, but if we can save one or two or three, and we did our job. You know, I, you know, the efforts that we put in are not in vain. If we can get, you know, out of this group of 10 or 15 kids, if we can get three or four of them in college, that's an excellent job. It's probably uh, my last year coaching. Um, Lee, I accomplished a lot of things in three years at, at Marshall. You know, it's a lot of work. The people don't realize, man, the, uh, what this basketball means to these kids, man. You know, like at the basketball, we went to school on Monday. You know, some of the kids probably gonna disappear. Some of the kids may not come back to school. You know, the only leverage I really, really have is when it's going through basketball team, because one way or another, I gotta, the kids gotta come back to me. These kids need uh, a lot, a lot of uh, support.
you know, and uh, I love to keep doing it, Lee, but man, you know, it's just like me against the world. Y'all don't know, man. Y'all don't, y'all motherfuckers wear me down. Y'all wear me down. Only reason why I don't give up, man, because I want to see y'all be successful. I know it's hard for me to change y'all lives, uh, guys, in one, maybe two years, man, but I just try to lead y'all to the right path, man. I'm telling you, man. Patrick, your black ass can't go to every party, man. As soon as somebody see Patrick Beverly, man, the motherfuckers, man, gonna be trying to fight you. They jealous. You know, just think of this right here. We even fight among ourselves. Innocent bystanders every motherfucking day, man, is getting shot. You know, let me tell you a story. <laughs> Do you know the whole UIC basketball team, that's where I graduated from, do you know they had like eight guys from the city? Ain't none of them motherfuckers playing basketball no more. All the motherfuckers on the street hustling. Ain't none of them graduated, Patrick Beverly. Not one. Do you know UIC ain't fucking recruiting no more inner city kids? Do you motherfuckers know my dumb ass the first black student athlete to graduate from UIC? I'm in a motherfucking history book. Ain't that a damn shame? So I'm asking you two guys to grow up, to come on to college. And you can't, it ain't about fun. It's about education, then basketball, and then get your family together, man. With his high school career coming to a close, the time arrives for Patrick to make a decision about his future. The two schools in the running are Michigan and Arkansas. It took, it took a long time for me to figure out this shit. For me to figure out which coaches are real, which coaches are bull. Bull stuff for me, I mean, it, just, it, it was real tough for some of these But uh, it came down to, you know, what, where, where does my heart want me to go? And uh, I have chosen to go to the University of Arkansas. All right. Patrick's hard work and determination pays off as he is selected to play for the Round Ball Classic, one of the most prominent high school all-star games in the country. At the start of the season, Patrick was relatively unknown outside of Chicago, and now he finds himself playing alongside such players as Greg Oden and Michael Conley Jr. Patrick went on to have a great season playing for Arkansas. Not only was he a starter his first year, but by the end of the season, Patrick was voted the Freshman Basketball Player of the Year for the SEC. I really don't dream about it no more. I just, I, I see myself playing an NBA game soon, so. That, of course, that'll be my dream for him to be in the NBA and be successful. And if not, then you need to be successful in other basketball areas. Just, just for your, my child to be successful in life. <laughs>